This is the highly anticipated Google Pixel 4a, and it's probably the easiest phone I've ever had to recommend. Put simply, if you're looking for a solid budget device that nails the fundamentals of what you need and brings along one of the best cameras in the smartphone market, then you really don't need to look further. The Pixel 4a could possibly be the phone you've been waiting for, and you shouldn't hesitate to jump in. Just a quick disclaimer before we start, Google did send this phone out to me, but they haven't paid me and they haven't asked me to say anything. These are my genuine thoughts on the product and they're seeing the video at the same time as you are. If that's the sort of video you'd like to see more of, then do consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, let's dig into it. I'm going to jump straight to the camera because I think that's what most people are possibly here for. Pixel devices have been the business for smartphone cameras for a good few years now and the 4a isn't looking to drop the crown. For going ultra wides and zooms, the Pixel focuses on a single 12 megapixel camera that really delivers the goods. The 4a oozes confidence, it knows how to take a great smartphone photo and shot after shot it delivers excellent results in nearly all situations. Photos are clean, well exposed, colours are punchy without being overbearing and the dynamic range is extremely well handled. I don't think you can really be disappointed with how the Pixel renders an image. There are times where I feel it's a little over sharpened, but it's such a minor complaint to an otherwise excellent camera. When things get dark, switching to night sight mode really shows off what the Pixel camera can do. Photos in this mode are quite incredible for a phone to push out, and I was constantly impressed by the amount of detail and light it managed to gather from a scene. On top of that, the Pixel also has the party trick of astrophotography mode, and the results are amazing. Seriously, I haven't been able to take photos of the stars this well even with my dedicated camera. You do have to leave it going for about 4 minutes on a tripod, but the results are so worth it. It's an amazing feature and I'm surprised Google aren't shouting more about it. Portrait mode returns and is quite excellent too. As with most portrait modes, when it gets it right, it can be mostly convincing. The 8 megapixel selfie camera is also great for portrait shots and for standard selfies, it's wide enough to fit lots in the frame too. There's no doubt here that the photography experience is excellent. The Pixel remains one of the best, if not the best smartphone camera for photos, but for video, it's painfully average. It does 4K up to 30 frames per second, which is fine, but the dynamic range takes a hit and the overall quality is just meh. It would be great to see some improvements here in the future, but sadly Google can't quite catch up to Apple and the iPhone in this department. Overall though, despite this being a budget device, the camera experience for photography is anything but. The Pixel 4a remains at the top of the pack and bests many flagship devices out there. It's a truly excellent experience. Okay, let's roll it back to the build of this device. I would go as far as to say the Pixel 4a design is intentionally minimal. There's one colour, black, there's one size, medium, and one storage option, 128 gig. And despite its initial pedestrian black slab looks, I think a lot of people are going to appreciate what Google have done here. The 4a is unapologetically plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap at all. In fact, the build is really good, there's no flex or creakiness to speak of, and it's also surprisingly thin. The main thing that stands out to me though is the size of the device. It's average, but it's bang on average. If there's ever been a phone that's felt just right in the hand, the 4a is it. The fingerprint scanner remains in the very perfect place on the back of the phone and it's as quick and as accurate as it's ever been. The mint accented power button is also utterly pleasing and I'm glad Google kept this in the design language. It avoids being mushy too, in fact all the buttons on the 4a are tactile and clicky which is reassuring at this price point. Another crowd pleaser of a move from Google is the inclusion of a headphone jack which I'm sure some people are going to absolutely love and on a budget device, I really think that's a nice touch to have. The 4a is easily a one-handed device, but thanks to that all-screen front, there's enough screen real estate here to please most people. The screen is great too, it's a 5.8 inch 1080p OLED hole punch design and while it's not going to blow you away by any means, it does the job well. Colours are punchy, blacks are deep and mercifully, it gets plenty bright enough for outdoor use, which isn't something you can always count on in this price category. 
The screen is also flat and after testing loads of phones with curved screens, I had forgotten how much I prefer it. There's no accidental inputs or silly screen gimmicks and it's refreshing to have that again. Look, the 4A is a really minimal safe design, but there's beauty in the simplicity here. Everything feels well considered and the fundamentals of what you need are taken care of. Do I wish there was more variety in the colors? Sure but I have to commend Google on the design here. For a budget device, it's really nicely done. The Pixel is running Google's take on Android with the Pixel Launcher, which is a super clean stock experience. It's pretty great, and in many ways, I wish all Android phones had the option of coming like this. The Pixel Launcher is snappy and fast, and there's enough customization in here now to keep most happy. I usually run Nova Launcher or Launcher on my Android devices, but after playing with it for a little bit, I never felt like I really needed to on here. The 4A is running a Snapdragon 730G coupled with 6GB of RAM, and I think for most people buying this phone, you're going to be happy with the performance. It's not razor quick, but I never really felt like I was waiting around for it either. Apps open and close with good speed, and I've yet to run into any crashes or software glitches. The only time you can really see it chug is when it's processing HDR photos, but it's not a deal breaker and I don't think it should put you off the device. You can game on here, but don't expect to have the best performance. Anything with high spec graphics looks a little rough around the edges and frame rates aren't anything to write home about, but they're playable nonetheless. And of course, less graphically demanding games run completely fine. While the overall performance is good for now, I am concerned as to how this will hold up over the next few years. Google has promised three years of software updates, which is great, but I think in three years time, the processor will be really showing its age. Considering the iPhone SE has one of Apple's top tier processors in there with the A13 chip, which will guarantee four to five years of software updates and stay quick too, this is one of the very few areas where it can't quite keep up. The most surprising area of this whole device though is how good the battery is on here. Google has popped in a 3140 milliamp hour battery on the 4A and it does a commendable job of keeping you going all day. For me, I'm getting a solid three to four hours of screen on time, which sees me out to the end of the day no problem. That usually leaves me around 30 to 40% of power left. I genuinely think if I was careful, I could get to the end of two days with the 4A, which is actually quite incredible. Good job, Google. If you do happen to run low though, there's a fast charger in the box, which is very welcome, and you can get around 50% of the charge in half an hour. It's not the fastest out there, but once again, at this price point, I don't think you can complain. There's obviously no wireless charging in here either, but I think that's forgivable. I know I keep comparing this to the iPhone SE, but the battery life in the 4A really is much better. It wouldn't be fair to not mention the other phones in this price bracket too. The iPhone SE, the OnePlus Nord, and the various options from Xiaomi and Honor and Oppo and Poco and Realme and Redmi, but a lot of these devices are region dependent, meaning you can't get them everywhere. And importantly for Google, the Pixel 4a is available in the USA, and a lot of those brands just don't operate there. That aside, Google have made a truly likeable device in the 4A. The design is minimalistic and clean, the battery is really decent, the screen is on point, and the camera is as strong as it's ever been. Like I said at the start of this review, this is probably the easiest phone I've ever had to recommend. If you need a new device and you're not fussed about specs and screen refresh rates and you don't want an iPhone, then go out and get one. You really won't regret it. Google has nailed this A series of devices. Now they just need to figure out what they're going to do with the flagships. So that rounds up my review of the Google Pixel 4a. If you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing. It helps the channel out massively and pop a like on your way out too. And I will see you all in the next one.